Okay, first of all, I would like to thank Claire for the invitation and of course to congratulate her for both, I will say, the uh, high ring at Collège de France and the gold medal of uh, CNRS, an extremely prestigious award. Uh, so I would like to start this conference with a very gentle introduction to a topic which, as we explain, is actually sort of old, uh, 30 years old, but has emerged very much in the uh, recent years. So um, to motivate the subject, uh, let me start with a, a very classical problem, namely uh, if you have a hypersurface, projective, some projective space uh, given by an equation f0, can you write f as a determinant, and more precisely, as a determinant of linear forms? of a matrix of linear forms. Now, as I said, this is very classical. I mean, for the cubic surface, this has been known till around uh, 1850. And in fact, this has been used is one of the ways, uh, not the easiest one, but one of the ways to find the 27 lines on the, on the cubic surface. So this is considered an, a very classical in uh, old treatises. Also, the case of quartic surfaces is very classical. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you cannot go far with this because if you have such a matrix, uh, it will be automatically, I mean, such a determinant, will be automatically singular when the rank of the matrix drops by two, which means in a co-dimension, uh, depending if you're in, in P, singular, dimension four uh, in projective space. So as soon as you are dealing with three folds, you have no hope to write down a smooth hypersurface in this way. Okay, so uh, let us settle for something weaker. Uh, we can ask if this is possible, set theoretically. Uh, uh, is this, but, so no, not possible, but, uh, can we write this set theoretically, which just means that uh, can we find an integer r such that f, f to the r can be written as a linear determinant. Now, as, as far as I know, this has not been considered classically. Uh, as you will see, this is a non-trivial problem already for uh, quadratic forms, for instance. I mean, if you are bored, you can try yourself to uh, write down. Uh, can we do something like that? Uh, just take a standard quadratic form. Can we find some power of R such that this is, a, again, a determinant? And I will give uh, the answer in five minutes, but it's not completely trivial. So it turns out that uh, this can be expressed nicely in, uh, let's say, let's say in modern terms. Uh, we have an easy proposition, which says that this is equivalent. So uh, following condition equivalent, uh, let's fix an integer r and a hypersurface, I mean, we have this set up here. Uh, this is equivalent to say that indeed we can do that. We can write a power of f as a linear determinant. Or there exists a rank r vector bundle, e on x, and an exact sequence uh, so this should be Rd, so I, I guess I didn't, D is a degree, sorry. So D is the degree of F. So this is two. Okay, this is easy. Uh, you see, if you have two, uh, 
uh, it means that uh, E is uh, uh, supported on, uh, I mean, if you look at this matrix of linear forms here, its determinant vanishes exactly along the hypersurface, so it has to be up, some, up to a constant of power of f, and uh, looking at degrees, you just see that you get this. Uh, in the other direction, you just write down the, this exact sequence, you just write down the co-kernel of this matrix, L, you have to prove that it's a vector bundle and with some commutative algebra, I mean, it's quite easy to, to see that E uh, is a vector bundle of rank R. So that's easy, but that translates from all the problem. Oui, yes? Sorry? Oh, yes, uh, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry, I uh, forgot to say that. Uh, I always assume that X is smooth. Ah, absolutely, uh, this is certainly, uh, uh, or, I mean, otherwise you can say more general things, but let me uh, restrict myself to, the, uh, to smooth varieties. Okay, so our problem is somehow translated in uh, the problem of finding such a vector bundle E. Now, can we say something about this E? Can we characterize E? Uh, the answer is yes. And it's not difficult, but let me call this a theorem. And this is essentially, I mean, this is due to Eisenberg and Schreier. So a big part of it was probably uh, known in different terms. I will say something about that. But, uh, the theorem is that, again, we have equivalent conditions. But now let me uh, extend a little bit the problem, uh, forget about hypersurfaces, and take any smooth variety in some projective space. And to replace these conditions, there is a very natural way. I will ask for a vector bundle with a linear resolution. If I have some variety of codimension P, C, let's say, let's say Xn in Pn plus C, uh, I expect a codimension of uh, resolution, sorry, of length C, and so I will just go down with O minus 2 something. And that. So the con condition one will just be the existence of such a resolution with uh, starting with the codimension and some power of minus c plus one, some power, so all of these are given by mat matrices of linear form, till op to some power, till e zero, and of course the condition is that there exist, so, so sorry, uh, so one will be that there exist e of rank r, vector bundle on x, with such a resolution. Uh, I guess I don't really need the rank of, uh, of E, so. Okay, uh, this is one. Two is a nice characterization of this vector bundle. Then we, we simply ask for the cohomology of E twisted by negative, so let me write this, H, no, H dot of X E of minus one. the dimension of x, this should be zero. And uh, three is that if I choose a finite projection, if I choose a, let's say a general projection uh, from x to some p to the n, all I need is that it's finite. And then the uh, push forward of E should be trivial or to some power, Pn. So three conditions are equivalent. It's, again, not very difficult. Uh, starting from a resolution like this, you see that uh, you get a lot of vanishing of this 
uh, bundles here, so it's essentially immediate to get two. Uh, it's also immediate to get two from three by the projection formula. If you start from two, you have to do some, again, to use some commutative algebra, in particular the notion of uh, uh, castelnovo manford regularity to get this, but it's not, uh, it's not difficult. So let me give some history of this uh, problem. Yes. Uh, I mean, sorry, what, what did I say? I mean, E is a vector bond, yes. Okay. E is a vector bond, is a fixed vector bundle on an X. I mean, I start from the assumption that E, I'm sorry, yeah, E is a vector bundle on an X, and then the condition is that either we have this uh, linear resolution or something. No, I, I start from a vector bundle. Uh, I mean, you, you certainly won't have three with a coherent shift. So, oh, you, you may, I, I could start from a coherent shift and conclude that it's a vector bundle. Is that what, what you? Yeah, you don't use, uh, you're right. Yeah, you don't use a uh, vector bundle. I think you need it for three, but uh, anyway, I'm, <laughs> I will uh, again restrict to the case of smooth variety and vector bundles. Okay, so this uh, Ulrich bundle we are actually appeared with, uh, in disguise, I mean, with a different name, uh, in fact, in a paper by Ulrich, so they really deserve the name. This is uh, 1984, but I mean, they are named uh, maximally generated cohen macaulay uh, module, something like that. I mean, something that geometers don't really like. Uh, and in fact, there had been some uh, nice work, which I will discuss in a moment, of uh, people uh, in commutative algebra around this, uh, this module. These are, of course, the, the modules on the uh, polynomial ring corresponding to the vector bundle. Uh, I think it didn't really uh, attract the attention of algebraic geometers. I mean, it's sort of very uh, commutative algebra. Um, then the subject was revived by uh, Eisenbühn and Schreyer, and this is in 2003. That's a nice paper in the journal of the AMS. Uh, again, I'm not sure the paper attracted uh, very much the attention of algebraic geometers. It has a strange title, and uh, I mean, at least I did uh, completely overlook the paper. And Again, in the last four or five years, there has been a lot of uh, uh, papers appearing on Ulrich Bundle and different varieties. And uh, so this was, uh, the third life is, uh, is now uh, fully blossoming. Uh, the main question, I mean, for me, which was already asked by Ulrich, is uh, whether does there exist uh, Ulrich bundle, I will write uh, UB, on any smooth projective variety? Of course, this depends on the embedding. We should be aware that uh, this is a question which depends on the embedding. Actually, it depends only on the, uh, on the line bundle defining the embedding, not, not really on the embedding itself. And the question is wide open, as you as you will see, uh, there are a few cases which we know and I would like to, to explain. Uh, maybe to give an example, let me go back to the question here. Can we now say something about that? Uh, so the problem is what can we say about quadrics, which are probably the simplest possible algebraic varieties apart from uh, projective space? And the answer is yes, but well, this is a proposition. So let me take a n-dimensional quadric in Pn plus 1, smooth. 
And uh, yeah, maybe I should observe that uh, obviously with, for instance, condition two, a direct sum of uh, Ulrich bundles is a Ulrich bundle, and conversely, uh, a direct sum of a Ulrich bundle is a Ulrich bundle. So we just need to, uh, if you want to classify Ulrich bundles, you just, we just need to find those uh, indecomposable. And uh, the proposition which says that uh, those, this, uh, the result depends on the parity of n is exactly, so if n is odd, it's one, n is even two, you'll reach bandas, uh, indecomposable, possible would be on Q of Frank two to the integer part of n minus one over two. So as you can see, it's not uh, completely trivial. You have to go uh, pretty to find a, to get a pretty high rank to get the solution. So as a consequence, the answer is yes if and only if R is a multiple of two to the, uh, I put n variables, which means that I'm in P n minus one, and my quadratic has dimension n minus two, so that will be n minus three over two. So we see that it's not uh, completely trivial. I mean, as soon as n becomes large, you get a need to very large matrix of uh, linear forms. Sorry, say again? Are uh, Ulrich bundles uh, necessarily slope stable or something like Oh, that? They are, yeah, because they are semi-stable, certainly, because of this condition. If you, if, I mean, if the push forward is semi-stable, the bundle has to be semi-stable. Just think of a, of a sub-bundles and, uh, but, uh, I mean, a direct sum of Ulrich bundle is a Ulrich bundle, so you cannot say more. Uh, Uh, which one? This one? No, no, no. This? The last one. Oh. No, no, it's, a, it's in the conclusion. There is exactly one, and it has rank okay. two to the. Uh, I'd like to, I mean, I'd like to give a, a proof. The proof is very nice. So let me take five minutes to, to give the proof of this. Uh, Statement, here you use this uh, condition three here. Suppose you have a Ulrich bundle on Q, then you know that pi upper star, lower star E is a trivial bundle, and let's say this is of rank R. For quadric, the projection, maybe I should write the projection, Q2. And this is of degree two, of course. We are just, just projecting uh, the quadric from a point outside uh, Q. Uh, so this should be O to the two R. Uh, let me write down the projection. Let me assume that, I mean, take the, let me take the coordinates so that the equation of Q is of the form x n plus one square quo some q x naught x n. Of course, I can take a, a sum of square if I want, but this is what I need. Now, uh, if I know the push forward of a vector bundle, uh, do I know the vector bundle? Of course not. I need something more. I need a structure of uh, OQ module, or to be precise, of pi lower star OQ module over uh, E, over on this bundle here. So the data of E is equivalent to uh, the data of pi lower star E, that is this, plus a, a structure of modules, that is an algebra uh, homomorphism 
from pi star of q to the endomorphism sheaf of O to R p n, which is just a matrix uh, m to R uh, of O, something like that. Uh, what is pi upper star, pi lower star of, of Q? Well, this is uh, very easy, of course. It's OQ plus OQ minus 1. Uh, sorry, OPN. This corresponds to the unit of the algebra, and this, the product is given by, uh, by the form Q, uh, Q here, uh, lower, case, lower case Q, by uh, it's an algebra structure. Can, can you see on this line or? No? OK. So uh, algebra structure is given by okay. minus 1 into OPN. And see multiplication by Q. Oh. Can I? Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so what is this? I mean, uh, of course, this, the, the part uh, given by the unit here is, is trivial. And so I have just to give a map of O of minus 1 into O to the something, uh, matrices with coefficient in O, with, uh, which is compatible with this Q. So that means, given a matrix of linear forms, m to r h naught of uh, op of 1, and the condition here, uh, uh, having a, an algebra homomorphism, means exactly that the square, the square should be q of x. So this is actually depending on x and the coordinate. And condition is that this should be Q of X times the uh, identity matrix. Another way to say that is that uh, to each vector in uh, Pn, or more precisely in Cn plus 1, in the vector space which uh, corresponds to Pn, uh, we associate an ordinary matrix, A of X, So this is A, again, uh, A twiddle, if you want, with the property that, well, I can call it A, the property that A of V square is Q of V times identity. But as is well known, there is a, an algebra which factors this kind of, uh, of map, and this is a Clifford algebra, Clif, of Cn plus 1 Q, into here. So finally, given giving this Ulrich bundle, E is equivalent to give a representation of the Clifford algebra, or if you prefer, a module over this Clifford algebra. Now, the structure of the Clifford algebra is well known. It's either, depending on the parity of n, it's a simple or a product of two simple algebra. So there is just one simple module, if it, or two, depending on the parity and these expenses. And the rank is, corresponds to this, uh, this uh, spinner uh, representation. Yes? Did you look at one finite map from Q to a projective A? Could you consider other finite maps and get more Other points? what? Finite map. I mean, here's you fix one finite map from Q to the projective A. The principle is how you could look. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it will give the same for any any finite projection, but what... what? No, but because here you, you describe the direct image of OQ as O plus O minus 1. If you take a degree, degree 3 map or 5 map or 500 map... Oh, you mean but for, for a hypersurface of, the, of no, no, higher degree? degree? Even for the quadrant. I mean, I could project the projective space further down. No. Ah. Yeah. I mean, it's a projection. Maybe I should have. A oh, 
It's a linear projection. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I should have explained that. We are in projective space, right? So I mean, it's just a linear projection for a general subspace. Say again? <laughs> yeah, no, this depends. Uh, yeah. Okay, but uh, uh, let me just observe. Well, this is a particular, this is, I think, the only case where we know very well, uh, we know essentially all your Dirich bundle. I mean, they're all the reason of this one. But there is a general theorem, which is due to these people in. Uh, community of algebra here. So this is a Herzog, uh, uh, Herzog. So let me write this as a theorem. Herzog, Ulrich, and someone in Becklin. Say so any, always smooth, I don't, uh, complete intersection Intersection in projective space admits a Ulrich bundle. And there are two ideas in the proof. It's, it's a quite involved proof. But there are two ideas. The first one is just to generalize this one by using what they call general, generalized Clifford algebra in, instead of. Uh, uh, using your, this relation here, you use this relation with a higher degree form. Uh, you can form an algebra, I mean, this makes sense. And, uh, but the problem is that this algebra is, becomes infinite, I mean, infinite dimensional. So you cannot conclude directly that it admits a finite dimensional representation. And then you use a, a, what is called matrix factorizations and they conclude with, uh, with that. But I will not discuss this. I will go back now to algebraic geometry and look at the, the objects that we like to consider, I like to consider in algebraic geometry, curves, surfaces, and, and so on, threefold, and see what we can say about this. Not very good. Well, <laughs> I have to do with that. Oh, I think this is okay. Maybe I keep this for a uh, Okay, so let's, so let me maybe give a list of this. So we have completed a section. This is one, one case. An obvious case is curves. Because in that case, I mean, the condition here is, is very simple. It just means that when you choose, twist your bundle by minus one, you have no cohomology. I mean, of course, you have bundles with no cohomology in any degree. So uh, E take F of any rank of rank R, say, rank R, uh, degree, what do you need? Something like R times uh, G minus one, general. This will have no cohomology, and then you look at, you take E equal F of 1. So the case of curves is, uh, is really trivial. But let's go to surfaces. It's already more complicated because you need two vanishing. I mean, the problem, the complexity really increases a lot with, uh, with dimension, as you can see from, from condition 2 here. Uh, so for surfaces, we need two vanishing, and it's not uh, trivial, as we would see. So let's, let me mention some easy cases, which have been known in, for, forever, essentially. So for del piezo surfaces, in fact, you have Ulrich line bundles. Uh, you can check, and it's very easy, to, if you take your surface S and take a difference of Two lines, so L, L prime, two lines which, sorry, which do not intersect. This is a, a Ulrich line bundle. 
That's easy. Uh, it's also easy for rule surfaces. Uh, if you in fact, it's easy for uh, scroll, rule scroll of any dimension. If you have something like PB of E over our sub curve B embedded in some projective, uh, embedded by linearly, I mean, in such a way that the fibers are, uh, are linear, then again, you have, there exists a Ulrich line bundle. It's a, it's a very easy exercise. Uh, I will say more about rational surfaces in, uh, in a minute, but you see that for simple surfaces, it's, relative, it's easy. So let's increase complexity and look at the next step, which is uh, surfaces of Caudalois dimension zero. So let me, maybe I write it as a theorem. Uh, for, the, for Del Pezzo? Yeah. No, I think that this one. Uh, ah, uh, you're right. I mean, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, so I should I should write uh, maybe KS minus one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah, your rich bundle is generated by its global section, so certainly it's not. Uh, yeah. um, um, so the theorem is that we look at minimal surfaces uh, of Codera dimension zero, and then they admit with one exception, which I'm going to write, they admit a rank two Ulrich bundle, except perhaps perhaps some K3 surfaces. Uh, There exists a uh, Ulrich bundle. As you explained earlier, the Ulrich uh, bundle depends on the choice of the very ample line bundle. Yes, so for all uh, very ample for all embeddings. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, no, that's for, that's always for all possible embeddings. I mean, as you will see, the construction does not depend very much. I mean, of course it does, but in some sense it. Uh, the nature of the embedding is not that important. OK, let me explain this statement about K3. I should say, uh, for K3, the result is absolutely not due to myself. This is due to uh, Mariana Prodou, Gabi Farkas, and Angela uh, Ortega. And they prove. Uh, Unfortunately, I mean, in each, when you look at the moduli space of polarized, we fix an embedding now. You look at the moduli of uh, polarized K3 surfaces. There is uh, a sub-variety in the moduli space which somehow escape the, uh, the, the method. But I mean, you know that a, a general K3 in each moduli space will admit a, a wrong two bundle. Uh, so as I said, this is a real not discuss that. I will, will, will like discuss the other cases. Uh, we have a classification, of course, of, uh, of other surfaces. I, I will not really use the geometry, but let me just uh, recall that the other cases are and request a million and by elliptic surfaces, which are just quotient of uh, abelian surfaces by a, a finite group acting freely. Uh, it turns out for the three other cases, there is a kind of uniform proof, which we like to show. It uses uh, essentially their construction. So how does it go? Um, how does it go? Maybe I should say 
something before. Uh, you see, we want to, ah, oh, fortunately, I, I erased, but you can see, still uh, see uh, condition two here. So uh, for surfaces, we, we have two conditions. That's already uh, quite difficult. Uh, the trick is to use ser duality to uh, make this just one condition. And the easy lemma, which I will use, is the following. Uh, suppose donc, I have a surface S with no, no hypothesis, and on, on code already mentioned, any, surfa any smooth surface. And wrong two, oh. wrong two vector bundle on S. Suppose I know that the determinant of E is a canonical bundle twisted by one, and I know that H naught is zero, and chi of E, earlier point carré characteristic, is zero, then uh, E of one is a wrong two Ulrich bundle. In fact, it's even slightly better. I mean, this is what uh, Eisenberg and Schreier called a special uh, wrong two vector bundle. The determinant is a K of three, and this is somehow better. This gives some uh, results on the way of writing down the Chow form of the surface. I will not discuss that, but uh, so the lemma is just very easy, as I said. The point is that for a, a wrong two vector bundle, this is where wrong two is a bit easier than the general rank. You have this non-degenerate form given by just by exterior product with value in the determinant. And this is uh, non-degenerate. So this gives uh, an isomorphism, let's say k of, let's say e of minus one is just the third dual of, uh, of E. So if I can prove that the cohomology of E is trivial, uh, the cohomology of the third dual is trivial also, and have immediately the fact that the cohomology of E of minus one is uh, trivial. Uh, now, if I know that H naught of E is zero, of course this implies, with, well, uh, so this implies H2 of E. Again, we take this, this is, uh, uh, how is it? H2 of E is H naught of the third dual. And so is H naught of E of minus one. Now, if I know that H naught of E is zero, certainly this is zero. So H2 is zero, and because I have this hypothesis on, on chi, H1 also is zero, and then uh, same for E of minus one by, uh, by ser duality. So that's a very easy lemma, but quite useful. And now to construct uh, this vector bundle, as I said, I use ser construction. So I will look at the finite subset Z, uh, finite, and reduced, I mean, just a finite number of points, Z. And let me remind you that Z has the kelly bukharak uh, property if how say, any hyperplane, so how can I write this, or oh, hyperplane, containing all points of z minus one, so containing, let's say, z minus p for all p and z, contains z. I think this terminology was introduced by uh, Griffiths Harris, but it's quite natural because the original kelly bakorak theorem is what says that uh, if you take the nine points 
of intersection of two cubics, and any cubic passing through eight of the points passes through the ninth point. So that's exactly the same property, any hyperplane passing through all the points minus one uh, contains. If this is the case, then you use fair construction to get an extension. So if this is the case, there exists a rank two vector bundle E and an exact sequence, zero Ks E ideal of Z of one, zero. Very standard, you just compute the x uh, of this. I mean, using serviality, you see that uh, the property here exactly tells you that there is one element, uh, one non-trivial element in the extension group, and which is even non-trivial locally, so that you're sure to get a, a vector bundle. This is uh, quite standard. Okay, so this is, uh, we want to apply the lemma to this guy. I have still no hypothesis on this. this is, general, uh, the determinant, I mean, IZ uh, doesn't count for uh, computing the determinant, so the determinant is what I want here. Yeah. So check, it's okay. Now I need this property here. You see, uh, Kai would just tell me exactly uh, how, ma how many points I, I must take for Z. I mean, the uh, Kai of IZ of one is Kai of O of one, minus the number of points in, in Z. So this will tell me exactly how many points I must take, and then I must manage to conclude H not E zero. Of course, I will have to do something, for instance, with abelian surfaces. I mean, uh, for KS is trivial, but... Uh, okay, so let me, for instance, uh, go, uh, give now a proposition. If our surface has no two form and no one form, so in classical terms, this is PG Q zero and H naught S OS of one zero, then E admits, then well, this, uh, for an appropriate Z, uh, this E is a wrong to a Ulrich bundle for, uh, uh, okay, I can even tell you what is with Z for Z general for Z. Uh, I should say, okay, let, let, let's say, I mean, S in PN okay, here, and this for Z n plus two general points. Sorry. <laughs> you have some OS of one, some com you can't mean H zero, do you? Oh, <laughs> I'm very sorry, H one, H one, of course. Yeah. Uh, you're right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, I mean, E uh, satisfies the lemma, I should say. Yeah. Okay, E of one is a which bundle, so E satisfies you, right, thank you. Uh, I hope this is <laughs> correct now. So uh, I should say this is actually due to uh, Gianfranco Casnati improving, uh, I mean, I, I missed this, uh, this very simple proof that I had a uh, uh, slightly weaker result and he, he showed me this. So you see this gives What, what, uh, we, uh, for, uh, How do you make sure that the KD Oh, you just take n plus two general points in PN. So, I mean, they, they form a projective frame. It's, it's uh, just by counting constant, if you want. I mean, uh, otherwise, if you have okay. some points in hyperplanes and you, you, you lose okay. dimension. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so this is a proof, actually, right? Uh, this is. Uh, indeed, this has a kelly bakurai property. We have this extension. We have H naught here, uh, zero. 
k is 0 because, I mean, you just count here k is 1. Here, uh, uh, h naught of 1 is n plus 1. This is where you use, actually, that, uh, that h1 is 0 because it tells you that k of O of 1 is exactly n plus 1. And now you uh, delete somehow n plus 2. Yeah, I have this idea. So k is minus 1 here, so k is 0. And, uh, and this has no section either because this, uh, your n plus 2 points are not contained, in, I mean, are in general positions, they are not contained in a hyperplane. So this is a proof, this is very simple. You see, this gives a lot of cases, and in particular, this gives almost all, I mean, many rational surfaces, most rational surfaces have this property, are non spatial. There are examples of uh, spatial rational surfaces, but they, they are quite particular. And this gives, in particular, this, uh, the end request surfaces. Uh, for the remaining case, I have to do something because it's no longer true that uh, this property holds. But uh, you just twist by a topologically trivial line bundle. Uh, for instance, let me, for simplicity, but this is really the, the same proof, but let me just like treat the case of S is an abelian surface. So KS is, tri K -S is trivial, O, o S E I Z of 1, 0. Now I have to tell you how I take Z. Uh, I take C, a general curve in O S of 1, and I take Z, uh, n plus 1, I think, n plus 1 general points in C. And again, I mean, it's uh, C span uh, P n minus 1. So for the same reason, I mean, n plus 1 general points will be in general, will satisfy the uh, Caleb Akarak hypothesis. Uh, you have this exact sequence, which, of course, does not give the correct answer because uh, you have section here, but you just twist. by uh, some line bundle of order 2, the pick S, non-trivial, but uh, of order 2. So you put eta, eta. This preserves the determinant. Now you have no, no cohomology here, have with a trivial line bundle here. You just have to check that H naught here is, uh, is zero, and you do that by restricting to the curve C, and since Z is general, I mean, you see that uh, uh, for general Z, you, you get no sections. Okay, in the, okay, I've still I have 10 minutes, so in the last 10 minutes, I'd like to go one dimension higher and treat the, the only case of three folds, essentially, is that I know how to to deal with. So the proposition, if, if I have uh, x d of degree d in p d plus 1, uh, final threefold of index 2. So there is a list uh, of such finals, uh, six or seven cases. I mean, uh, you start with x, the cubic threefold in P4, intersection of two quadrics in P5, and uh, I think this goes for three, at least d, at least eight, or something like that. Uh, maybe six, seven cases, something like that. Uh, and I claim that this admits Yelrich Bandal again of only two. So this is slightly different. Now this is for one, for, for the given, I mean for the half canonical of half anti-canonical embedding, the natural embedding of the uh, of the final swiffer. Let me remind me that this means that okay, uh, x minus one is uh, O x of two. This is essentially the definition of index two, and uh, I look at the, the embedding given by O of one. 
And I use again their construction, but in dimension higher. So it's, it has a different flavor because now you, we consider something of co-dimension two. So we have, we have to consider a curve in, uh, in XD. And the lemma is that XD contains Uh, uh, it's a normal, uh, yeah, normal elliptic curve. Uh, gamma in P D, well, I mean PD plus one. So normal elliptic curve means curve of degree uh, D plus two embedded by the whole uh, uh, complete linear system of degree d plus two. That's, uh, uh, how do you do that? I mean, that, you prove that. I mean, it's, uh, the way I do that is that it is proving actually that uh, X contains a normal elliptic curve in a hyperplane of degree one less, and then you add a line and you deform to get curve like this. It's not uh, completely trivial, but it's true. And now when you have that, uh, you use circ circ construction tells you that there is an extension OX E vector bundle of rank two I gamma, the ideal of gamma of two, zero. When you need the condition you need, basically, is that the normal bundle, the determinant of the normal bundle of gamma should come from, from the, yeah, well, we have gamma in X, actually, so. My X. And uh, the point that you want the uh, determinant of the normal bundle here to come from X. But since this is an elliptic curve, I mean, this is, uh, there is, the dumbbell bundle is essentially the uh, determinant of the tangent bundle of X, and of course, it's, it's defined on X. So you get a sequence like that, and the claim is that E is a Ulrich bundle. So uh, again, uh, third duality helps a lot because the determinant is O of two. Uh, and uh, K is O of minus two, which implies that the third dual E of minus three and E of minus one are third dual. And E of minus two is a, is a auto uh, and itself. So you just have to check uh, vanishing of cohomology of this and of H naught of H1 here. And I guess I, it's probably no point in checking the details, but it's just, I mean, very standard computation. You just use the fact that gamma is given by, the, by a complete linear systems. This means that when you twist by minus one, uh, you have no H1 here, no H0 and no H1, and that's, uh, that, that does the job. I should say that uh, since the chairman is here, uh, this uh, is a generalization of what, uh, of the work of uh, Markushevich and uh, Tihomirov on the cubic. And on the cubic, I mean, uh, you, you do exactly that. You find Ulrich bundle, and they have a very nice modular space. The modular space is uh, essentially the uh, intermediate Jacobian of the cubic blown up along the Fano surface. So there is a very beautiful geometry, and I believe there should be also a very beautiful geometry in a higher degree, but I didn't uh, really uh, try. I mean, it's not obvious how to, how to work that. Okay, maybe I think I will stop here. Thank you.